I have a joke for you. How do you know when someone is training for a marathon? Do you give up? They tell you about it. It seems to be all they talk about. And although, look, it's a joke, there's a big element of truth about it because while you go to work, you do the school runs, the homework, you make the dinners, you bring the kids, all the activities they're involved in, do the day-to-day things we have to do to run a household, to live your life, you still have to try and fit in four to five training sessions or runs a week. So when someone asks you, well, any news? The only thing you have is, uh, I'm training for a marathon. Get active with Midlands 183. Powered by HearMed Healthcare in the heart of Tullamore. Here when you need us. HearMed.ie So we're up to week three now. And that kicked off on St. Stephen's Day. And the uh, training plan is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to run five kilometres each day to cross train on Saturday and then run 11 kilometres on Sunday. This is how it went. I'm going to set off my first run, week number two. The last time I left you, I had done the 10k. Legs are still a bit stiff, still a bit sore. Kind of worried about my calf. Worried about the fact that I consumed about 5,000 calories yesterday. Between food, drink, biscuits, chocolate cake. Oh, God, I'm thinking about it now. Right, get up with it. Just finished 5k. God, actually did it in a pretty good time, I have to say. Uh, just under 30 minutes. So I'm happy with that. It's very cold out. It's one degree. I forgot my gloves. My hands are bald. I was, I was running with my hands up my sleeves. And then what I like to try and do as much as I can is breathe into your nose and out your mouth while running. Breathe into my nose. My nose was going numb with the cold. Absolutely numb. I couldn't feel it at one stage. About halfway through, it started to warm up. So not too bad. These are things I'd never think of. Go for a run. Quiet out in the road, so it's not too bad. My smartwatch is brilliant when it tells you your distance you've ran and your speed you're going at and all this kind of stuff. It's excellent. Except about two kilometers into the run today, it died on me. Yeah, the battery went. And uh, I think I've done 5k, I'm not sure. I'll have to go back and check on the maps to measure it and see what I've done. Uh, hopefully it was 5k and it wasn't 3 or something ridiculous. No, my luck. Yeah, let me just cut in there. Um, it turns out I ended up running almost 6 kilometers after. But uh, back to the story. Feeling a little bit of discomfort in the right leg again. That calf muscle that pops during the 10k last week. Uh, yeah, starting to feel it. Sore. Just finished the run and I'm, I'm limping at the moment. Um, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know, just put on some muscle rub or something or you know, relax it or absolutely don't have a clue. I don't know if it's uh, an injury or if it's just your body adjusting to what you're asking it to do, if you know what I mean. So uh, I'll have to get more clarification from a uh, colleague and physio central and tell them more so he might be able to tell us a little bit more about that it's um one of them ones starting off a new training plan you can get points where your muscles are getting quite sore and uh, that, that can be very normal because we kind of come into this thing called overtraining where you push your body a little bit past what it's used to doing it adapts to training it's done and it gets a little bit stronger it gets a little bit quicker it gets a little bit more endurance what comes along with that is pain generally my muscle soreness i suppose i'd Usually describe that as pain that will start to settle down. You know, every part of your body might be sore, maybe general soreness compared to what you might talk to with your calf where you forget that pop and one area is really, really sore, abnormally sore. Um, again, with some of the running and stuff with these tendinopathies and things, they can come on quite gradually, quite slowly, and they can feel like just muscle soreness initially, but then over weeks they might kind of still be there kind of longer than normal. Mm-hmm. And that's the way they'd usually start off, um, definitely when there's a bit of an increase in the training load. Um, so I suppose that's probably our end then, trying to find out what the difference is between someone that's been sore after a run and start one of these kind of um, overuse injuries or chronic uh, wow. ten- tendon injuries. You learn pretty quickly, I think, yeah. <laughs> when you start off the training, yeah. 
you often hear people say, oh, I don't like to run because I'm sore afterwards. But being sore is normal, isn't it? There's a, like, yeah. there's a period where your muscles will tear and repair themselves. Yeah, that's it. Um, any training you're going to do and, you know, that even from in here, um, that could be someone that has just, you know, got out of bed after being in uh, having surgery for and being in bed for six weeks and they decide they're going to start standing again. They're, they're probably going to be sore after doing that, too. It's just, it's just that increase in load. Um, someone going to the gym for the first time, you know, it's, it, it, it's normal that muscles, I suppose, are going through, as you were saying, that kind of micro damage and they have to repair themselves and kind of inflammation within the cells and in, in, in the muscle. It, uh, it, it's, it's quite normal for that to happen. That's when the adaptation happens, really, is kind of them that time in between your training sessions, the, the muscle adapts so that it, it, the body kind of knows that you're doing more. So kind of tells itself, listen, I need to adapt here, make things a little bit stronger, make them more able for the next training. Um, obviously, that, that's when your rest periods come in. Re- really important that there is sufficient rest. And I suppose that's when you have to listen to the body if you're quite sore fatigued and your training plan is saying you have to run that day there needs to be a little bit of leeway with that program take a step back take a day off go for it the next day or some of your longer runs just saying i might not be able for this or it might be some of your quicker shorter faster runs saying the body doesn't feel like it yeah. um a lot of the people we see in here with um these kind of soft tissue muscle injuries um, a huge amount of them come in and they say, I knew it was going to happen or I, I knew the day of the start of the session I didn't feel right, you know, and to get these kind of five, four, five, six week injuries then and push them out. And they, if they listened at the start, took their own intuition on, on it that it didn't feel right and just took a step out, probably would have been of more benefit. But again, that's something that uh, that's we we'll learn along the way, yeah. I think. Yeah. So today is uh, Thursday. The 5k run yesterday didn't happen, Uh, unfortunately. It didn't happen because uh, my right calf muscle is still in agony. Um, Put my hand on it now, it's sore, it's just rock solid, but it seems to be ever present. So instead, I went to the gym on the Thursday when I was supposed to do another 5k, but um, I didn't run, I cycled instead. So I got on the exercise bike for half an hour by doing that and putting very, very little pressure on the calf muscle. So I'm just kind of hoping it'll keep my fitness up while my leg is out, kind of out of action. Hopefully it'll stand to me in the long run. Speaking of long runs, that's the uh, the aim for hopefully on Sunday. We're to do, I think, 11 kilometers. So I'm hoping if I can rest up this calf muscle for as long as possible, treat it for as long as possible. It might benefit me, and I suppose it's more important to get the long runs in than the short runs. So um, hopefully I'll I'll make it to Sunday. Fingers crossed, anyways. So after a good bit of rest over a few days, the pain died down, thankfully. And Sunday, a.k.a. New Year's Eve, arrived, and I finally got to meet up with my good friend and marathon running partner, Christopher Cribben. What's the crack, lad, huh? A spare hat. A spare How many do you have there? Uh, five. <laughs> <laughs> and we took off on what I thought was going to be an 11 kilometer run. Right, so we're halfway through uh, our long run. 11 kilometer run. And uh, Chrissy made it out this week. Chrissy, you were, you were in bad old shape last week, how you know? Oh, not so bad. <laughs> Feeling a bit better today now, won't I? The tablets are working, yeah? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think so, yeah. We're after running, what about 5.5k? Uh, just over six, yeah. Just over six k. Just over six k. Gee, she kept that from me. You told me it was going to be eleven. Ah, uh, we'll be already. <laughs> this is great peer support, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> How are the legs? Oh, not too bad actually. Yeah, mm. I've had to be a bit, bit more tired with the antibiotics and steroids and stuff like that. But I uh, fueled myself well, you know yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of Baileys and other liquids last night. <laughs> other liquids are available, obviously, like uh, water. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to leg it back here. See how we go, and sure luck, we'll chat to you at the finish line. Just finished the long run. How long was it after, Chrissy? Seven and a half miles. So what's that oh. in new money? Oh, bless us. 12k. 12k. Oh, Jesus. We were only supposed to run 11. What's the corner between friends? 
How do you feel after that? Yeah, actually really good, yeah. Oh, look, I'm going to be sore. There's no two ways about it, but sure, look, all part of the fun. You don't get a medal for quitting, do you? No, you're right, you don't get a medal for quitting. <laughs> <laughs> and plus it's for a great cause, so. True indeed, it well, is for a great good, cause. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Sure, look, the pain you're going through right now is nothing compared to what boys and girls across the country are going through. And uh, Barristown are just a wonderful association. So, uh, you know, whatever we're going through, we can't really complain. No, no, definitely not. We will complain, though. We can be a fair <laughs> shot, yeah. <laughs> so in April, we're going for the marathon, the 42 and a half kilometres or something. Is that what it is, Chrissy? Yeah, 42.2k, yeah. Lovely. Not that we're counting or anything. Uh, do you know what sounds better? 26 miles, 385 yards. That sounds shorter. I like that. That's the old money, yeah. <laughs> It'll be my first marathon in April. What number will it be for you? 17. 17. There, there will be prime years. He used to run four or five a year. My goodness. <laughs> life happens. But that's it, life happens. Life gets in the way. What was the first marathon you ran? Uh, Longford. I did Longford in 2012. Funny story about that, actually. I was about 22 miles in. And for any listeners that know the area, I was coming out of Newtown Forbes heading back for Longford. And I got to an old lady's house and she was sitting outside her table. She said, uh, how are you feeling, young man? And I'll leave out the expletives, but I said, <laughs> I'm wrecked. And she said, would you like to go in and sit down and watch a bit of television? She said, I have the fire on. I looked at me watch and I went, no, I'm pretty sure I have somewhere to be. I said, but thanks very much. Probably the nicest thing somebody's ever done for me, 20 miles into a marathon. Was it tempting to go in? Yeah. <laughs> How were the legs at that stage? Uh, let's just say I was walking gingerly. <laughs> it wasn't my greatest hour, but I got it done though. And then, oh, I got over the finish line and my two calves cramped. Yeah, it was like, I don't know what it was, like Tower Bridge or something. <laughs> pumped over. But it was obviously, it was a good enough experience that made you want to do it again another 15 times after that. Yeah, yeah, look, there's times I quit, times I wanted to quit. I did a marathon before, what did I do, Dublin? I did it for uh, St. Camillus Nursing Home in Caloocan and that really... Brought home the, the luckiness, I suppose, of doing it and being able to do it and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And then I did one for Temple Street Children's Hospital through Tesco where I work. And now I'm doing this for Bardstown. And I wasn't really clued in to what Bardstown was, if, if I'm honest. But when Peter told me a few stories, I was like, absolutely. Does that kind of give you the motivation to keep going to do Martin when you're doing it for charity? Because there a couple of weeks ago, you know, we put it out on air and a girl got in touch and she said, thanks very much for doing it for Barrisound. My uh, my niece is going through sickness at the moment and she said Barrisound are an incredible charity to do great work. And uh, she sent me a picture of her um, giving us a thumbs up and it was one of the most beautiful little pictures I've ever seen in my life. And I got emotional. I, I, I cried in the studio when I seen the picture and I thought to myself, you know something? I'll run this marathon now if I have to. You know, obviously not advised because uh, I'm not fit enough. But when you find you're doing it for charity, does it kind of spur you on that that little bit more? Uh, It definitely does. Yeah, it definitely does. Especially when you have first-hand experience. Again, when I did it for St. Camillus Nursing Home, my uncle was in palliative care in St. Camillus Nursing Home. And I knew what, what the money was going towards. That adds a lot of motivation. And then, like, say, you know, like there is a little bit of pressure on you because... You want to finish it and whatever else. But, like, when you do it, like, say this time now, like, time won't be a factor for me. Well, I hope it won't anyways. I'm doing it for myself, of course, but I'm doing it mainly for the kids and for what possibly me running this marathon could have in store for these kids is the main motivation. I'm sure you're the same, Peter. That's it. Look, we'll try and do as much as we can, raise as much money for Barristown Children's Charity. They are an incredible charity, 100%. And look, as you say... As long as we can do it, we we should do it. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. You know what I mean. We're lucky we, we can do it, so yeah, let's we're, let's we're give blessed. it a whack. We need to give a big shout out to uh, Auntie Nula. Nula Casey, there. The day we announced this, she got on to her son and said, "I want two hats for the two lads to run in uh, the Manchester Marathon for Barstown." And the days are cold and everything, so. Big shout out to my Auntie Nula there for dropping us over two nice KC sports hats. Nula, you're an absolute legend. I'm holding one in my hand here. It's green, it's red and it's white. And uh, I tell you, it helped today because it's absolutely lashing out during that long run. So It was, it definitely was. <laughs> it was a lifesaver. And uh, Chrissy, we're going to do the, we decided we're going to do the half marathon in the Mullingar as well. Yeah, sure, we'll give it a whack, sure. It's nice and local and it's, it's always good to say you're running around your own hometown or whatever else. But yeah, we'll give it a whack. We'll give it a whack and sure. please God, we'll, we'll get you in one piece. Sure. On our, on our way to Manchester. Plus 21 kilometres. <laughs> now you have yeah, it. Right. Now you have it. And if anybody else fancies doing it as well, come along. Absolutely. We'd love the company. Absolutely. 
even if you're new, we'll 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 stir you along. There's big shout out to the lads here at Park Run as well. There every Saturday morning, it's free to do. Get out and walk or run five k, free of charge. Sign up on their website. There always a good Kickstarter to 100%. get you going. Absolutely. Especially with new me, new year, new me, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, now you have it. You've no excuses, folks. Get out no, there, do it, no. and uh, we'll be with you along the way. We'll be there, so uh, enjoy in. Absolutely, Chrissy. What's next week? Long run will be how long? Probably work for about. 14, maybe 15k. So we'll do a couple of runs there during the week. They won't be, there'll be nothing too hectic now. A couple of 5k's and maybe four mile, maybe one of the days or whatever. Life gets in the way and kid, yourself, you have kids and stuff. So, you know, even if you're doing a plan, don't get too bogged down on it. You can always substitute it in another day or whatever. That's music to my ears, Christy, to be honest <laughs> with you. So, <laughs> fingers crossed, all goes well. Ah, uh, we'll be sound, we'll be sound. Big, big thanks to everyone who's donated so far to Barristown Children's Charity on Midlands103.com. Thank you so much to Hearmed Tullamore for their donation, to Alison Moorhead and the Moorhead family, Paulrick Burke, Kathleen and Hubert Sheeran, and those of you who wish to remain anonymous as well. Thank you so, so much. I don't think you'll ever fully understand just how far your donation will go towards boys and girls all across the Midlands and all across the country who reap the benefits of... Barristown Children's Charity they are absolutely amazing and if you wish to donate anything big or small it all makes a huge difference and you can do so by clicking on midlands103.com it'll be the first thing you see on the website get active with Midlands 103 click on that and it'll take you to our I Donate page now next week I want to get my gait analysed because my runners are about 10 years old and a few people are saying they could be the source of my injuries so we'll see how that goes And you can check out the podcast for an extended episode of Get Active with Midlands 103 with more detail and more in-depth interviews where you can tune in same time, same channel next Wednesday as we take another step towards running a marathon. Get Active with Midlands 183 powered by HearMed Healthcare in the heart of Tullamore. Here when you need us. HearMed.ie